How is it going, friends? It's good to be back with you again for another Brain Smasher Classic. Um, yeah, I said I wasn't going to do a collection update for a while, um, but this is going to be one of those. Um, it's been a really hellish week around here. Uh, a couple of weeks, honestly. Um, don't not don't want to get into it too much, but uh, my mother passed away last week, and I've been handling her estate, uh, and it's just it's a learning experience um, going through the whole thing. Um, I'll appreciate your sympathies and all that, um, but I don't know. I'm just gonna keep on keeping on. Um, I'm honestly kind of looking forward to a return to normalcy um, for a couple of days, and then. Um, her service is going to be this weekend and uh, all of that good stuff. So I hope you're doing well. Um, but again, like since I've been so tied up and just my head has been kind of everywhere else, um, just knocking out a collection update video just kind of feels like the easiest thing to do. And I've got some killer releases here that I'm pretty pumped to be talking about, honestly. Um, so there's quite a bit, but um, some of them I'm not too familiar with yet, so we'll just kind of skim through, but there's some of them I haven't listened to a whole lot that I'm really looking forward to getting you to check out, hopefully. Uh, in the interim, we're going to be jamming Ex Mortem with Berserker Legions. Um, a friend of mine who worked for Hammerheart Records back in the early 2000s gave me this so it's just a promo deal. Um, at the time, I didn't really give a shit about this kind of stuff. Um, just the brutal, like European kind of hyperspeed death metal kind of stuff. Um, it, it really did, I think, tank the genre for a great many years. Um, but I'm kind of coming around to this kind of stuff, honestly. Um, just unrelenting, pummeling, muscle bound, kind of stuff with really nice uh, beefy production um, and I chose this because I've been absolutely fascinated with the guy who recorded this record Anders Lundmark um, he was a Dutch producer he also played in the band Conkra uh, which by the way if you have any recommendations on which Conkra album is your favorite or you think I might like the most I'm open to your opinion but I have not spun this record in probably uh, 15 years, I'm gonna say. So, just thought I would pop it in. Um, because the, you know, really, the work of Andres Lundmark I've been, um, obsessed with. I've downloaded and bought a couple of other albums that he produced. The thing about Metal Archives that kind of makes it hard is that, um, the album that we'll get into next, he mixed, mastered, and produced, according to Metal Archives, but there are other albums that just say that he produced them. So I'm not sure if that's like lacking the fact that he did mix, master, and produce all these other records, or if just sometimes just kind of just inconsistencies. Anyways, I was thoroughly obsessed with Eusipian's Dead Corner of the Eye solidly for the past three weeks, maybe a month straight. I have not been able to stop listening to this. So, honestly, out of all the stuff in this video, I want you to check this out the most if Brutal Death Metal sounds good to you at all. I guess saying Brutal Death Metal, okay, there's a lot of new school kind of like slammy bands or kind of brutal bands that um, I don't really get into. Shit like Malignancy or stuff like that. Eh. Um, maybe I'll be coming around to it in a couple of months or so, but Eusebian's Dead Corner of the Eye um, just really it, it's kind of up there with the fucking godly 90s death metal bands, and I don't mean early 90s I mean like, we're talking the debut of Hate Eternal that fucking ruled um, I'm really having a hard time like pulling other comparisons that would fall alongside this thing, but there's just no frills. There's really no overt selling points to it. It's just fucking awesome. It's really blazing speed. 
Uh, the vocals are just masterfully mighty. Um, it's so good, man. I, I just can't recommend Dead Corner of the Eye enough. Um, it's just no frills. There's no gimmicks to it. It's just perfect. And the production and the recording on it is just absolutely mind-boggling. Um, I would say it's worth probably making a blind buy on this. You should be able to find copies of this for five, ten bucks or something. Um, because I listened to the download of it for um, a couple of times, and I wasn't really wowed. But I went ahead and bought the CD um, from Pagan Flames, and uh, once I popped the CD in, it just came to life for me. It just absolutely nailed me to the fucking railroad tracks and just ran me over straight through. I listened to it probably five times in a row the first time I put it in. And I'm really looking forward to continuing to listen to it. I'm not sick of it yet. It's fucking awesome. So let's move on to another Eusipian release in skinless form. Um, just got this in the other day. It's an EP with um, three newer songs. Um, by the way, this came out in 2004, if I'm not mistaken. And this, I want to say, is 2006. So kind of right up there. Um, this is a little more melodic than the full length. Um, and I actually don't really like that about it. The recording quality is pretty good. It's not the same studio as Anders Slimmark, who did the full length and this ex mortem. Um, but it's pretty good. It's adequate. I don't know if they may have had some lineup changes from here to here or not, but it's pretty good. And I picked it up for probably $4 or so from Paragon Records. Um, they slept on a couple of bonus tracks from a 7 inch, um, and the band was done. So I'm pretty sure, other than like a, a hard to find demo, this is the whole Eusipian discography. Um, so, I don't know, that's kind of cool. Um, also got a, a lovely package from my buddy Dave, my favorite subscriber. He sent me the latest full length from Merg. This is Stravan, out on Nordvis Productions. I really hope that this winds up being at the top of a lot of year-end lists um, because this band deserves more recognition than they get. Um, I think finally, now that Nordbiss is getting some pretty good distribution in the States that people are paying attention, I'm not going to pull this out. It's just probably black on the inside anyways. The artwork on this is really minimal and I'm kind of disappointed. I think. When you have an album that's so intricate and so ornate and so uh, just captures your imagination so much, to give it such monochromatic and like limp-wristed artwork to go with it, it just kind of undersells it for me. I think, not that you like absolutely have to have amazing artwork to go with an amazing record, but it just makes me think like someone didn't give a shit. Um, and Merg has this real like minimalistic, monochromatic kind of artwork going on with their releases so I don't know I I shouldn't harp on the artwork as much but it is a brilliant just blazing riff master of an album um, it's I think it really stands well between sounding Norwegian and Swedish at the same time um, there's this, just these real intricate um, harmonic differences going on between the guitars um, it's they're real unique they're growing incrementally. Um, I'm really looking forward to what they do in the future, but um, three amazing releases under their belt, each getting a little bit better as they go along. Um, Murray is a really, really killer band. Um, he also sent me, by the way, thank you Dave, while we're on camera, uh, this 10 inch from Sweden's Morbus Chrome, uh, a band that I didn't have anything from, and I mentioned them in a video a while back when I was talking about uh, was it Utratum, maybe? I'm drawing a blank. Um, like I said, it's been a hell of a last month or so. So this is a three song 10 inch put on Century Media. Um, might be limited, but I really like these 10 inches, you know? <coughs> Seven inches are kind of a pain in the butt to just two songs, flip it over, uh, and you're done. But this is a fun release, um, and a lot of times 10 inches have kind of like some, they're like splattered or whatever. Um, this does come on, um, the blue vinyl? No, this is actually just black vinyl, so I won't bother showing you that. 
the quote Mike Z done. But yeah, just amazing riffs. Morbus Chrome were kind of, I think, unfairly lumped in with a lot of those kind of like retro death metal bands of the mid to early 2000s or early to mid 2000s. But they were doing something very unique. Um, I need to follow up and get their Sweven full length, of course. Um, and I'm not sure if they're still active or not. Um, but happy to start there, and we will continue on with the worship of Morbus Chrome. Um, got a couple more LPs, a lot more CDs. This X Mortem is really killing me. Um, I think the drums are kind of a little too loud for me right now, but we'll see how it sounds in the car. Um, that Usipian just sounds so fucking good in the car. Um, it finally, the temperature has finally went low enough this week where uh, it was cool to be driving around with uh, windows down again. So I turned that fucking album up all the way. So I raided the Pagan Flames distro and got a lot of good stuff out of there. Um, this is Horror Creatures from Shub Nigura of Mexico. Um, this is a collection of seven inches that was put together by America Line Productions. This has probably been sitting dead stock in the distro for a good 10 or 12 years, um, but everything on here is from 89, 90, 91, 92, 93. There's some live stuff on it. The live stuff sounds like shit, I'm not going to lie. Um, there's a rehearsal session at the end where they cover Chapel of Ghouls. I don't remember if I even got that far on it because once I heard like six live tracks in a row, I was like, all right, I'm done with this. I, I'm not sure. I might not remember that, me remembering that right, but this is my first uh, foray into Shub Nugurath, a band that I've kind of always meant to pick up some of this stuff from. But it's just killer South American death metal from the early 90s um, and some of their earlier material. So it's rough, raw, brutal, dirty, uh, and disgusting. Artwork on here is really killer too. They put together a lot of the uh, album covers from what's represented here. I'm not going to dig into it too much. We are uh, kind of in a rush. Also picked up, um, I think the first full length from also Mexico's Zibalba. This is Adsam Pupik. Um, released on Guttural Records. I don't know much about this band. Um, I first heard about them, I think, when Nuclear War Now reissued this and brought them to the United States. And it seems like they kind of play here. Um, fairly often, but I wasn't familiar with this band really whatsoever, but I really did wind up digging this. It's real minimalistic. Um, <clears throat> as goes for a lot of this era of uh, bands, now I'm kind of blanking on when this was originally released. I want to say this originally came out in like 92, 93, so this is very early proto corpse paint, kind of monochromatic black metal. Um, it doesn't really have any clever production to bring it to life in a sense to make it have this kind of necro atmosphere um, that would suit the music a lot better. But that isn't really a, a problem on it at all. It just sounds four trackish. It sounds nasty and raw. Um, there's really nothing wrong with it, but I think being that it is so minimalistic, raw, and just kind of cave dwelling, I think if it had a production on it that was like really clever, like the way Transylvanian Hunger um, just sounds perfect for what it is, um, I think it would have been maybe a bigger success. But it's a killer record, and you should be able to pick up this version of it um, on the pretty damn cheap. Also, so I think you should be able to find most of the stuff still in the Pagan Flames distro, unless I got the last copies of it. But um, if that's the case, I'm sure there's other distros out there. Um, I use the metaldetector.com to look for um, a lot of this kind of stuff that's probably still sitting in distros or if I'm just kind of trying to decide where the lowest price might be. Um, I'll put a link down below for you guys to check that out. I know I've harped about it for a couple of videos back in the past but I get questions every once in a while and I know that a lot of you guys could uh, benefit from the metal detector. But this is Forgotten Winter. Um, my friend from Pagan Flames played this for me saying it was kind of dungeon synth but like a lot better than a lot of dungeon synth which man I'm, I'm fucking over dungeon synth honestly um I was from the get-go let's be real here um so yeah 
Mortis's Fault to Laherska is the greatest Dungeon Synth record there will ever be, um, in all honesty. But I am definitely open to entertaining others, um, even, you know, things like Summoning Minus Morgul. Here comes the cat. Um, and anywhere in between there, you know, I'm open to hearing stuff that's really good. Um, and I was pretty impressed with this. Forgotten Winter, um, Binda. Um, I would say it has a lot more in common with Summoning than, uh, a lot of other Dungeon Synths. It just seems like really anything passes for Dungeon, for Dungeon Synth these days. If it's, if it's a Casio keyboard and it isn't black metal, but it has black and white cover art, it's basically Dungeon Synth, right? Um, anyways, it's pretty killer. I think a lot of you guys who are buying up all the Dungeon Synth would be pretty impressed by it. <laughs> I also bought this one um, based on the cover art alone. This is In Twilight's Embrace with Vanitas. Actually, I picked it up based on the cover artwork and I said, hey, is this any good? And he said, well, it's really good. It's kind of technical and fancy like Death Spell Omega. And I was like, yeah, okay, we'll give it a shot. Um, turns out he was wrong. Um, I don't agree with that. It's really like a hyperspeed kind of melodic black death metal band. Um, I guess the most important thing to know about it is that it's not very good. Um, I listened to maybe the first half of it or so. And like, this might have been pretty good in like 98 or something. And yeah, why bother talking about records that aren't that great? Um, yeah, if that sounds great to you, look, at, look into it. I don't know. Also, um, delve a little bit further into the discography of Skepticism. I'm a big fan of Storm Pro Fleet, but I have never moved beyond Storm Pro Fleet, honestly. <laughs> and that was a mortal sin. So I picked up Lead and Aether. Redstream put this out. I think this was the follow-up to that. I always avoided this one, I guess, because the artwork on this is just really bad, but it's a killer release. Um, I jammed that a couple of days in a row. So I also picked up, yeah, this EP called Ace. Ace is high. Um, I haven't listened to this yet, so I can't imagine it's very different from any other Skepticism releases. They are a band who kind of keep doing the same record over and over, but it's like a record, so no one complains. Um, how about some vinyl? Um, also got in an order from, order, from Find Rune Recordings, and, uh, Got the new Panopticon, everybody's talking about this. Um, if the double CD, Scars of Mankind, double album, Scars of Mankind on the Once Nameless Wilderness didn't give you enough material, there was one leftover track from that, The Crescendo of Dust. Uh, only available on LP. It's a single-sided release. And it's got the uh, Panopticon Phoenix artwork there. I, I can't see that, so uh, I don't know if you can even see that or not. But uh, if you're not aware, Laurentian Forest Metal is what that means. You can look into that and figure it out yourself. Um, yeah, good stuff. Um, it also has a second track on here um, that was a song written during the Autumn Eternal sessions. Um, so another uh, effort in the flawless discography of my good man, Austin Lund. Also picked up the new one from The Glorious Dead. Our friend and brother, Marty Worm plays in this band, but uh, the reason to buy this is because it's fucking awesome. Blasting, brutal death metal from Northern Michigan. Um, great artwork from Nate Burns. Um, they're doing like a uh, million different variants and you can't choose what you get, so you get some random thing. I think that's fun. I think that's cool. You can get this for six bucks and it's, it's deadly, man. It's really fucking good and I think um, they're doing a good good job building the hype on their material. 
and once they do a full length, which I think they're done recording at this point, um, that's going to be damn awesome. I, I kind of, I'm kind of bittersweet on like seven inches before a band finally gets their um, full length out because I just, I just kind of want it all off the bat. So I don't know. It's promising. I'm really looking forward to them, um, you know, making their debut because the stuff is timeless. Um, they're kind of referencing not quite old school death metal, not like 90s death metal, but kind of turn of the century era kind of stuff. And it is real, real good. Um, and it's not just, you know, biting the tenets of it. It's not just kind of lifting what they want from it. There's riffs. There's, there's actual content. There's memorable harmonies and melodies. There's enough variety going on there. Um, that uh, it's got some depth to it. It's it's definitely worth your time. So thank you, Marty, for sending me those um, since I, I paid for them. <laughs> also picked up the classic. That was a killer riff. Uh, Drawing Down the Moon, Be Here It. You all should know this one. Um, been dying to have this on vinyl for so, so long. Um, Cult.B. Um, I guess is the name of the, of the label. I don't know. Uh, but primitive, brutal. Not really brutal. It's just, it's just so, I don't know. It sounds like it's from space, but it sounds like it's from a cave in space. Um, just so good. Nice insert there. Um, probably 180 gram black vinyl. No frills, just an excellent um, release. This album deserves to be in print on vinyl on every format so that everyone can understand the majesty and the amazing, chilling atmosphere. Don't resleeve on camera um, that that album contains. Um, uh, where are we at here? A couple more CDs and I'm out. Um, also picked up, finally, man, I've been a fan of this album for a really long time. Belenos, Chance de Bataille. I haven't really given this, um, I haven't really looked into what this is about. Um, I kind of wonder if this is like songs about George Bataille. Anyways, if you're not familiar with Belenos, you should be. So, Belenos is a French um, solo project. Sometimes he works with a drummer, sometimes he doesn't, but honestly, you wouldn't really know it. His discography is flawlessly consistent. I have my favorite records, Spice Leger. Um, Jenson Gardas and this one um, Aaron says Enrique as well but uh, yeah this is just kind of another one of the favorites um, of his it is just mighty heathen pagan black metal um, it's not necro sounding it's just really nicely polished everything about it is just really tastefully done um, memorable riffs and there's just the like, keys Herculean kind of um, transitions in the songs that are just so effective at just building the drama and just bursting it forth uh, into these next memorable parts. There's kind of some atmospheric kind of stuff going on. It's just got, it just offers so much. I can't believe this band isn't a lot bigger. I think just they didn't really land on a, on a uh, very well known or well distributed label. This came out on Adabok here. Um, what uh maybe 2002 three four somewhere around there but uh i don't know let's take it back to 2019. this is the new one from my boys falls of raros patterns and mythology um if you like any of their material there's no reason you wouldn't be utterly fascinated by this one um it's there's nothing um surprising about this record um, it's just more wonderful good songs from these guys I do feel like the drummer raised time playing live in Panopticon it stepped up his skill level to the next level to being one of the absolute finest black metal drummers in the United States um, I've seen him live several times shared the stage with him even once um, and dude is just an absolute master at his craft and so it's just always exciting to hear new ideas from Ray 
um, and the whole gang. Um, I kind of got to say, I hate this digit book that probably won't fit on my shelf either way. Um, so there's that. But um, yeah, it's great stuff. I haven't really gotten too familiar with it. I've listened to it maybe two or three times. Um, and it does have those moments that just pull at your heartstrings and just bring you down into their vast beauty. There's like sorrowful kind of moments, but Falls of Roras does like no other band. They have these kind of sorrowful morning kind of sweet melodies, but they're also kind of like joyous and triumphant and explosive. Um, to me, they're, I, I'm really, really happy when I listen to Falls of Roras, especially Believe in No Coming Shore. Um, so they're just one of my favorite bands and pretty good friends of mine too. Um, also next, touching on the nerve of um, the loss I had last week, Low, Things We Lost in the Fire. Um, I had honestly been uh, apprehensive about getting into Low because this is sad, sad music. Um, and I always thought like, I'm, I'm not really quite ready to, you know, jump into reveling in that kind of sadness. I'm, I'm not a sad guy, but uh, last weekend when we admitted my mother into hospice care, and I realized that she would never be going home again, I was fucking bombed. So I went to the record store and I bought me a low album. Um, it's good, you know, but it does absolutely decadently revel in just utter, utter sadness. Um, it's not metal, if you don't know. Um, it's kind of like post-rock, indie rock, um, but it doesn't rock at all. It's just, it's mopey and slow and droning and repetitive. Um, but I value music like that so much because it's so therapeutic to hear someone else have a emotion that's familiar with what I'm feeling. So I have that connection with some albums and it's really, really does a lot of good to be able to um, share that with other art. Um, let's see here, what else do we got here? Something completely fucking different. Uh, the Magia Viterum with the Divine Antithesis. Um, this is a Digipack release on, might be self-release, I'm not sure. Um, if you don't know, this is the guy from um, Gnaw Their Tongues, which is a band I haven't spent enough time trying to figure out which is the best avenue to go into, but I don't know. I've heard enough Gnaw Their Tongues for me to say maybe uh, not quite my thing. But this is different. This is... It's thoroughly composed and it, it relies a lot less than Gnaw Their Tongues on having this kind of cold, industrial, kind of ethereal sort of production to it. This is a lot more down to earth. Um, and that you can follow the riffing, even though the riffing is absolutely insane. Um, it's not so over the top that you can't follow along with the chaos, but it's it seriously sounds like 6,000 micro robots descending from hell and just vibrating around your eardrums. It's just, it's caustic and anxiety inducing and I kind of love it for that. I've always wanted to get a copy of this and it's kind of rare but not so rare that you should have to pay a lot of money to, if you find someone selling it. Transcendental Creations put this out. Um, it was recorded in 2010 so it's it's maybe about 10 years old or so around there but it's a really really interesting release. I'll definitely put a link down below so you can check this out. It's a uh, Really, really interesting. If you are a fan of Utegite, Utegite, or whatever it is, um, this is kind of a, a pretty clever precursor to that um, stuff. End of Ex Mortem. Wow, that must be an EP or something. All right, uh, I guess uh, Berserker. No, Ex Mortem. Berserker Legions must have been a short record. So I put on Wolfitan. Um, I cannot read this whatsoever. Um, I'll put a link down below, but this is an awesome pagan folk metal band. Um, okay, let's. This video must be running on way too long, so let's uh, get through these. Also picked up Slawa, um, Rain of Fire. 
Hail to Fire. This came out on um, Old Temple, which is a killer kind of death metal uh, label out of Poland. Um, I'll, I'm not gonna lie, I picked this up only because of the name, and it's fucking awesome. Not reinventing the wheel whatsoever, it's just kind of like a, maybe a little less brutal um, war metal kind of deal. Um, but if they have actual riffs, and it's actually kind of good. Um, also picked up Until Death Overtakes Me. This is the third album from them that I have, and this is called Days Without Hope. Um, this is a solo project of some guy that has one of the most prolific discographies I have ever seen. Um, and as far as I have seen, all his stuff sounds pretty much exactly the same. But um, some Until Death Overtakes Me releases really, really hit the mark. So I thought I would take a chance on this one. And it's really, really good. It's just really solid funeral doom with a drum machine. Um, it's got this kind of like orchestral sort of uh, style to it. It kind of reminds me of like Shape of Despair, only a, a lot more bleak and minimal and slow. Um, also picked up a demo from a uh, fellow YouTuber, Chandler Brown. This is his band. Oh, and this is their debut EP, self-released, CDR. Um, and I want you to get this. This is fucking awesome. Um, the production on it, I, I would gripe about, but um, I have heard that the digital sounds better than the CD. So um, I believe it's maybe pay what you want on Bandcamp. So go ahead and check that out. But these guys are very promising out of California. Three really, really, no, four really, really long songs on here. Um, and even though it's just a debut four track release, um, these songs are very, very long and they have an interesting kind of style to them. They, they kind of have this like hypnotic repetition to their riffing where they, where the riff is like kind of going in and out and changing ever so slowly, but the drums, good job Chandler, are accenting these uh, ebbs and flows and intensity. Um, and it just kind of, it's, it's a really interesting way of seeing these really lengthy phrasings in black metal. Like a 12 minute long song will have like four to five riffs. So um, it's pretty, it's it's a really tough task to have a band be able to pull that off and, and add enough intricacies to that repetition and use that to their advantage. And for being so young and having it be their first um, release, I, I think they show a lot of potential. Uh, last two, picked up a full link from Infinity, um, Non Dehoc Terra. These guys are amazing and nobody fucking cares about these guys. I believe they are from Netherlands? I know, somebody will correct me I'm sure, but man these guys are fucking rad. They're not reinventing the wheel at all. Um, they're just really doing a great job. <laughs> kind of like mystical, demonic, um, just blazing fast black metal with great riffs, incredible drums. Everything about it is just um, pretty much excellent. Um, I just think there's a lot of bands doing this also pretty well, but Infinity work deserves a lot of uh, attention. Lastly, uh, Mike Seatown, I know you're going to be pissed at me, but I have not picked up this until this weekend um, and I regret it so much. You know, I was a huge fan of Mysticism Macabre and uh, De, De Ombre, uh, uh, what have you. That EP that they did was kind of good, but I should have been listening to this years ago. Um, just never got around to it, man. So I am really, wait, this is Le Ombre Malessus. I don't know, the one with the uh, candle fuck you on the cover. Um, so this is fucking awesome. I kind of, I was reluctant to get this because I knew this was a couple of years removed from the other two full lengths that I'm kind of obsessed with. Um, but I was afraid that this would be too different from those. Uh, but I was wrong. This is super, super good. I don't think I could name another band um, who does the dissonant riffing so well. I Their style is just untouchable. No one else will ever be able to do it like Darbulia does. Um, 
on this album only, I kind of hear a little bit of similarities with some like Total Death era Dark Throne. Um, but yeah, the riffing is just super atonal, caustic, and just dissonant as all fuck. Darbulia are masters. I'm really going to miss these guys. They broke up a couple of years ago. Uh, but yeah, check that out if you want something unique. I really appreciate you commenting on my videos and keeping in touch and uh, sticking with me through the thick and thin. Hope you're doing well. Take care of your loved ones and we will see you next time. Thank you.